Battle of the Challenges podcast with Vincent Cloud and Famous Dave. This is Double Agents, episode three, and this is Enemy of the State. Um, watched by, uh, I gotta, I gotta say it, Dave. What do you think? Do you think numbers went up or went down? Uh, probably went down because the premiere yeah. is always pretty high and then it dips down. Don't I know it? Um, so it went down to 0 0.79 and that's a dip from 0 0.84. Yeah. We're just getting further and further away from that million, uh, mark. Well, this episode was, I'll say this, it was kind of bad. And that was the other thing that kind of made me not want to jump into it right away as well. Because things happen, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of a bummer, isn't it? And then, I, I, I don't know, I, uh, I guess we'll get into that when we get into these notes, Dave. Headlong into the notes, right? Yes, I can't wait to get into talking about Josh. <laughs> this is going to be great. Let's get into the meat of the episode, because that fucking Hawk and Fuzzy Bunny bullshit was indeed bullshit. So let's talk about in this room, where right after elimination, Kyle shows up, and he's with uh, Wes, Devin, and Nam, and he's like, you know, look what he did to me, and I was his friend. What the fuck is he going to do with you guys? Kyle's kind of saying, like, Fuck Fessy, I'm with you guys now, right? That's when Fessy walks in, sits down, and they're like, why'd you do it? Like, it's so crazy that you did that. And so Fessy reveals the secret, that the secret vote isn't a secret at all. But he doesn't reveal it to his friends. He reveals it to a room full of basically enemies outside of Wes, you know? Remember, this is... Uh, okay, so I guess I'll let you take over but i just want to say that the whole reason why wes is there now is because fessy put in kyle instead of wes he wanted to make a friendship with him remember so this is all kind of falling apart here kyle's kyle's gonna be like and guess what wes uh the young bucks all voted you in you know this is basically a big fight for wes between kyle and fessy you know it doesn't go well for Fessy. I, I I don't know. I thought he already had a talk with Wes and said, guess what? The secret vote isn't secret. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think it's a big deal that Fessy uh, told everyone that the secret vote isn't secret because once he puts in Kyle, everyone's like, everyone is questioning, like, why did you do that? So Fessy has to have a reason to why he put in Kyle. And right, so it, and the thing is, is like the odds are he's not going to be uh, by the time there's the next mission, odds are they're not going to win three in a row, and then someone else is going to be in that double agent role, they'll have the secret vote, they'll have access to that information, and then he doesn't, he can't wait that long because then they'll come back and they'll be like. You fucking lied. You never told us. So he does have to say it at some point, and I think he knows he has to say it. He probably, obviously, should have told Corey and Nelson, his yeah. two main guys in his alliance first, but he just spills the beans prematurely to kind of, like, tell Kyle, like, hey, that's why I put you in. And, you know, yeah. and, like, and Kyle, you know, he was calling him out being like, you're a bitch. You didn't go in. You knew it was going to be physical, and you were too scared to go in. You know, like, so Fessy, he's got to say something at some point because, I mean, Fessy really never has anything interesting to say. Oh, my gosh, you know? yeah. So he, he felt like he needed to say something, and he just kind of spilled the beans about it. So I, he did have to say it, but it was kind of a, a weird time or weird people to say it to. For sure. I mean, because, like, Devin and Nam are in the room. They're not, you know, they're not friends with, Fessy or or the Young Bucks or anything like that, really, you know? Um, the other thing I'll say is that uh, um, Kyle, in confessional, says, like, Fessy, you got to know that no one's ever won the challenge by not lying. And, you know, like, we've... I think we've talked about this, where it's like a lot of champions, they do have to be assholes. They do have to sell someone out to get to the end and to win. It's very rare that they don't, like Landon, for example, you know? Where, like, someone will play it clean and win, right? But so when, in that season he won, he actually did have to form an alliance. And then, 
Well, that was the third time he won. So I could say that the other first two times he was clean. But, uh, yeah, but it was like his first kind of like solo or duo win. It's a... Man, I don't want to. I don't want to count an alliance as being dirty. That's the. That's the only thing. I don't know. And what happened is he had that alliance, but then that alliance betrayed him. But then he ended up winning over and escaping that alliance. So I yeah. feel like he already had the redemption by the time he showed up in the final. I don't know. I'm just trying to say is that Kyle brings up an interesting thing about people having to sell their soul basically to win, right? But right then and there, I'm like Kyle. The reason why you're mad at Fessy is because he lied to you for further gain. He just revealed everything. He just said that, hey, I've been keeping the secret vote a secret, and I've thrown you in, Kyle. You thought I was your friend. So he is being an asshole. He is perhaps selling himself, you know, his soul a little bit to get ahead. You know, so I feel like, Kyle, that was a good line that you had, and it'll eventually tie up to Wes leaving. He'll, have, he'll talk about winning with honor, you know what I mean? Uh, but I feel like it just doesn't track very much. Yeah. Challenge me, Dave. You know well, you want to. <laughs> I mean, I, I I agree with what you're saying, and it's it's right. funny that Kyle says that because when Wes later he'll say, you know, you don't need to lie to win on this show, and it's like, but then Wes, then what have you been doing for the last fucking twelve years? Oh, like, you, but he you, wasn't. Or like right, why? Right. Like if you don't need to do that, then why have you been doing it this way for so long? Like obviously, like Wes, I don't know. He's so full of shit. <laughs> I okay. I have so much to say, but I'm gonna I'm gonna come back at you when Wes actually says it. Right. So just remember okay. what we you know that little back and forth because oh here it comes, but not until like the twelfth round, something like that. If we're, if we're boxing or the fifth round, if we're the headlining a UFC event, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about uh, some. What are we gonna talk about? Some egg quesadillas and driving on the back of the truck. Oh no, no. Before we get to that, that's because that's all terrible. Um. Okay. So, uh, in comes in Cam and she breaks it up. At first, I was like, "What the fuck do you care?" And then I remembered, "Oh yeah, Kyle and Cam are are, are a pair now, right? They're partners." Yeah. yeah. So so it makes sense uh, with that little section and then we're to um oh again real quick uh fessy goes to Corey and says eventually like hey the vote isn't or the secret vote isn't secret and that's when that's when Corey's like well i wish you would have told us before you would have told our enemies and stuff like that and now wes knows that i gunned for him so like you're putting me in a bad position but fessy again in person says hey i did what i had to do to get ahead that's more balls, Dave. I feel like that's more ballsy than just saying it in con in a uh, confessional, like Anissa would. You know, Anissa never says, "I don't give a shit" to your face. She'll say it in, in confessional. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is Fessy is kind of a pussy, but the only time he stands <laughs> up for himself is when it's to Corey or Nelson. Like Fessy His wants to friends. make sure <laughs> that Corey and Nelson are submissive in that that three way alliance. Fessy is the top dog, and he has to let them know that he's above it. So that's that's why Fessy does this shit, I feel like. He's just asserting his dominance over there. But Corey, like so the thing with Corey is, is he's like, oh, Wes knows that I voted for him now. It's like, Corey, are you stupid? Wes already knew that you and Nelson, like, you were voting for him. Like, he already knows this shit. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, he did obvious. make that... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's obvious just to trying... us, the viewers, and right. it seems pretty obvious. But then, like, they'll randomly say stuff like, "Oh, now he knows that we're going for him." And it's like, well, duh. Like, yeah. Wes understands the votes, who's going which way, and who's saying shit to just, you know, act like they're playing the middle of the road or whatever. But he knows. Wes knows. It just it just threw me off because. As soon as you went off script or off note, um, I was freaking out. I was like, I don't remember if that was episode two or episode three. I honestly couldn't remember. I was, so that's why when you were talking, I was looking through my notes. I'm like, was that that episode where he, like, make me the janitor or the CEO or something like that, right? Yeah, that was episode two. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, man, let's get into, let's get into the actual mission uh, called Roadkill. 
where it's a big truck, you wrestle, you throw each other in nets and stuff. It's going about 50 miles an hour or something like that. Um, it looks fucking beautiful, the outside, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like a doesn't it look like Game of Thrones beyond the wall sort of shit? Well, yeah, it was recorded in Iceland, right? Yeah, yeah. Were they both made? Is where Game of, did Game of Thrones film in Iceland? Uh, yeah, Two? I think when they were doing North of the Wall. Whoa, North that makes sense. Holy shit, that's cool. Yeah, just yeah. need some White Walkers, kind of make it more interesting. But... Well, they got Wes. He's pretty pale. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, okay, well, it's so far and so cool looking, but it's very expansive. It's almost like a desert of ice because, remember, they could barely see the big truck coming in the distance. It's almost like a mirage. Yeah. yeah so it, so it looks really awesome. We're going to have a wrestling thing that, I don't know, I'm just going to say it didn't really match my expectations. The, the view, the environment really sold me on, like, we're going to see some serious shit. Instead, uh, not so much. We're gonna see. Yeah. We're gonna see a lot of truck use, diesel truck use, just destroying this mother nature that we have. This beautiful area that we're gonna see on screen. They're like, we're gonna drive this big gas chugging son of a bitch eighteen wheeler for how long per fight? You know, <laughs> it's very decadent. It's very American. They should have had like a Prius dragging like a trailer, and they could have done it on the back of that. Or maybe, yes. maybe a Tesla car, battery powered. Yeah, get some fucking Teslas out there, man. Get a bunch of Teslas, stack them on top of each other. Yeah, yeah. Dip be a lot healthier. And all the tanks and all the semis. Yeah, get, just get out Teslas. Here. Yeah. <laughs> you can't charge those things out there. <laughs> I would have, or or like get a uh, dog sled, get pulled by dogs, um, <laughs> uh, iron will style, right? Am I right? Okay, so do you want to go uh, for the wrestlers, uh, you know, or the people fighting one by one, and just kind of sum it up real quick, or do you want to just say like, well, this is what I remember. Moving on, it's up to you. Because I've done this uh, we, countless times, Dave. We can do this a super abbreviated version <laughs> because okay. there are basically like three different outcomes that happen during these pairings. Either someone gets hurt, uh, oh, yeah. someone pushes someone else off, and they they both fall off at the same time, but somebody happens to drag their foot on the on the top of the truck, so they end up winning and they have to look at the replay. Or it's just a stalemate. And nobody can push anyone off. Those are the three outcomes, basically. Right. Kyle and Devin, they time out. Is that right? Does that sound right? Sure. I have no idea. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't remember either. But I do remember Nicole getting uh, Cam down, wraps her legs around her. She kind of like her head kind of pulls guard in a sense. But I think all that stuff is what fucks up her shoulder, right? The bone's sticking out. And and uh, Nicole looks over to the crew. And she's like, hey, my fucking shoulder. But no one understands what she's saying, Dave. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and then and then Cam, you could see her. She kind of like looks at the shoulder, looks at the crew, notices nothing's happening for like a split second. And goes like, she's like go. do, I, do I push her off or do I take it easy on her? Yeah, she keeps on making her engage in the wrestling. I think... Cam saw the bad shoulder, and she's like, let's just keep wrestling. Maybe I'll win, or maybe you'll hurt yourself more. Maybe both, right? Cam yeah. is a fucking snake. or a, a, No, snake is a bad term, but, you know, she's a mastermind or something, right? Well, I, I don't think Cam did anything wrong, because, like, if Kyle and Devin, if we're remembering correctly, if they timed out, then Cam knows she has to beat uh, Nicole. So even if she's hurt, she still has to push her into the net because that's the rules. You have right. to push them off. So that's, you know, that's what she wanted to do. All right. Well, let's move on, though. Let's move on to Wes versus Josh and Natalie versus Nani. Um, uh, Natalie gets a, the the ankle pick on, uh, on Nani. That was pretty sweet. And fucking throws her down, right? Yeah. Um, and I believe throws Nani over, 
Wes and Josh, they both fall, but that's where Wes is like, he ends up winning it because it's like, it's the NFL, right? Where you drag your feet across, right? Yeah, stay in bounds. <laughs> yeah. And I thought that was brilliant, but there was someone on uh, another podcast, our, one of our great rivals, Dave, who thinks they could do this show better than us. Um, they were like, well, I don't believe it. I think Wes is full of shit. I feel like he fell and he just happened to have his feet there and that's how it happened. But I wanted to say, well, why? Why do you think so? Because clearly both Natalie and Wes were winning the same way. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Nam, uh, Nam, fuck. Nani and Natalie both fall, but Natalie was holding on to the edge with her fingers last. Yeah. That's how she won. So they both knew to hold on to the ledge longer, right? Yeah. And so it, it makes it not, ol not only was it Wes and Natalie, there was tons of people. Like we're seeing like tons of replays of competitors just like trying to keep their feet on last as they both fall off. Yeah. Like that yeah. was kind See, of the game where it was like, oh, you're going to fall off. You want need to keep your drag your foot on the top and be the last person to go off. Like, it was not, this was not just something exclusive what happened to Wes and be like, oh, we got lucky on it. Like, everybody was trying to do this. Yeah, but see, again, you don't have, oh, that was their podcast. And they, you know, they said that and, all, you know, who knows to, to listeners are like, you know what, you're right. Oh, my gosh, you are the Fox News of information for the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on to, let's pick this up because I'm getting so bored with this. Darrell <laughs> and Amber <laughs> B versus Leo and Gabby. So Darrell versus the wrestler Leo. It goes to yeah. a draw. I was I was looking forward to this and it looked good. Um, I don't know if you could tell, but basically Leo technically knew how to wrestle. Isn't there a difference between being a pro wrestler and an amateur wrestler, Dave? Oh, yeah. Right? For sure. Yeah. So I didn't think he would have legit amateur wrestling moves. I figured he would just be like, I'm trying to suplex you, Darrell. <laughs> or like, I'm He's trying to trying hit to you in the face. Or something. Yeah, exactly. Oh so, <laughs> but he was doing like legit amateur wrestling moves. You know, getting low, uh, grabbing the leg. I don't even know what the fuck that's called. But like using momentum and shit. And Darrell wasn't able to push him off, man. So they TO'd. Does that remind you of a little Darrell versus Nelson scenario years ago, oh, perchance? Yeah. Yeah, well, I remember you back then, Dave, saying, Oh, Darrell's washed up. How could he not defeat <laughs> Nelson? And I I, I said that. And I was like, no. And I think it's good that, that they drew. You know, it means that Darrell's not an old man and Nelson isn't quite there yet. I don't know. I felt like it was a good it was a good representation of both. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it probably was because Nelson <laughs> is actually super impressive when it comes to uh, eliminations and one on one stuff. And I don't think right, I right. realized or appreciated that at the time. <laughs> but, uh, and, it takes a bit. <laughs> and yeah, Durrell Durrell is definitely he's still super awesome. He's still awesome. I, you know, I was just. I was trying to call him washed up because I hadn't seen him in forever, so and I expected more, I guess. But like in this, I expected Darrell to lose this, and he didn't. So I, I was impressed by Darrell by keeping it to a draw because, like, is it Leo Rush? Leo, I don't know. It's just Leo. Leo and Gabby. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like Leo, I thought with his WWE experience. And he's obviously has some amateur wrestling experience too, whether it was in high school or just, you know, you're still learning these amateur wrestling moves while you're in pro wrestling. Are so, you? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're training you on how to do certain things. Hmm. It's not just bouncing off the ropes the whole time because you're having matches with guys like, uh, uh, what's his name? Gable. I forget his first name. But he's like very good amateur wrestler style you have to be able to compete with these other guys who do that style, so you need to be able to do it as well. So I thought right. Darrell, it was impressive that he was able to stay on there because, you know, when you're getting your legs taken out from under you and how slippery that top of that truck is, it, it was like they gave him slick shoes and a slick surface on top, 
So everyone's just constantly falling down to their knees and they can't really yeah. stand up very well. Was there a fear ever that they could possibly fall off the back? Because remember, TJ's like, this is the first time ever, no harnesses. So if you fall off the back, you're done. And I'm like, bullshit. No one's going to fall off the fucking truck and land on the fucking road, right? Like, this is just like when they're saying, like, oh, you're going to swim with the sharks, but the sharks never bite. Or are you going to swim in the snakes and the snakes never bite? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there was, like, a big <laughs> wall on the back of the truck. Yeah. They were going to fall off. Like, but why impossible. bring that up? It's know. just typical like, TJ bullshit. That they're going 50 miles an hour. I doubt. They're probably going 30, 35. They're not going 50. Come on. Yeah. Like. It looks that way on screen. They're like eh, 30, 30, uh, 30 passes for fifty in uh, in Hollywood, right? All you have to do is play it at one point two speed, and you're like, oh yeah, they're going fast. <laughs> That's a new thing, by the way. Just real quick, like people talking about watching things or listening things at different speeds. I've been yeah. hearing that more and more now. It's so weird. It's just so random. People like, okay, oh, podcast a lot. They'll speed it up. I mean, you can really? listen to like a three hour podcast in like two hours and 10 minutes or something. I don't Whoa. know. But like, people... you can, like, you can really condense, you can listen to more, uh, listen to more stuff that way. Wow. I wonder if people do that for us. Or maybe we could fool them. They're like, okay, so they, <laughs> you know, like talk really fast. Okay. But I do want to say real quick though, Darrell's partner, Amber B, not Amber, wait. No, that's Amber B. Fuck. I fucked it up. We'll wait till we get to the other Amber. I got a little something, something to say about her. I Basically, I like her. That's all. <laughs> really There's a difference. There's a difference. Um, okay, so uh, uh, that's about it. Girls fall both, but Gabby happens to win. Next, we have Nam and Lolo and Jay and Teresa. Real quick, Lolo versus Teresa. Tosses Teresa over. Were we surprised at all? No? Probably not. No. What about Nam and Jay? How how are you feeling about going in there? I mean, it's just a total mismatch. Yeah. Yeah. I Jay is way okay. Than Nam. Yes, that's true. But we just saw Leo hold off Darrell, right? Yeah, so I thought. <laughs> yeah, but Jay's a pro survivor. He he won Survivor. That's like it's gotta <laughs> count for a lot. <laughs> <All right>. uh, <laughs> So like Survivor, Vince Survivor is the broom in this scenario. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay, so well, Nam does win, right? But you got to see afterwards where Nam lies on his back. He looks like he's fucking exhausted, man. And I, if and if I have Jay pegged correctly, I feel like he's a little scrapper. He's not quite Derek, but something similar, where he has got a lot of fucking heart and a lot of. You know what I mean? Tenacity and oh, shit like that, right? Up. Yeah, no quitting them. Yeah. yeah, Nam is the classic. He's like Fessy last year where you're like, oh, yeah, this guy's great. And then he gets to the final and you're like, oh, shit. Fessy got fourth place. He lost to Corey. He lost to Kyle. You know? It's just like yeah. that'll be Nam in a final. Like he's going to gas out for sure. All right, let's 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 move on. Holy shit. Uh, where are we? Okay, Corey and Tori, right? Versus Liv and Mechie, or Mechie, whatever it is. Corey and Mechie yeah. both fall off, but Mechie happened to win. Um, I I really, I don't know. I don't know. Corey, oh, I don't no. think Corey lives up to my expectations. I like him as a personality, but outside of that, you know, what is he good for? Fucking, you know, impregnating. I, I don't uh, really like his personality at this point. It's just played yeah? out to me. You don't like this? Just him constantly, like, <laughs> <laughs> rubbing his hands together like I got something working on, you know? So know. He like on. goes in the boat and he's just like, Wes, Natalie, you got too many targets on your back. And it's like, what the fuck does that even mean, too many targets on your back? You, you know, Basically what you're saying is, everyone in my alliance told me to vote for you, so I'm doing what they said. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, okay, Corey, good job. Oh, oh Corey. Uh, but next, though, I mean, uh, it's Liv versus Tori. Now, Tori pushes Liv over, and that's where she's like, oh, my God, my arm. She's very British, remember? And that's when yeah. Mackie, like, grabs her arm, like, what the fuck? And that's where she's like, what the fuck are you doing? Don't grab my arm. Yeah. Because that's yeah. Oh, that's what Cam did to Nicole as well. 
Yeah. But do you remember, though, when Nicole's shoulder was dislocated, Cam looked over to seats. Wait. Looked over to their partners, and she's like, look at Nicole's arm is fucked up. And she shook her arm, thus oh, yeah. making it worse. Honestly, I think Cam... I'll use the word stake. I think she's really she wants to win badly this season, man. She's got her yeah. man Leroy working for her now. She's cutting deals and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Cam's on a mission. She is like Car Maria in War of the Worlds 2, where Car and Polly are like the head of this alliance. And they, uh, you know, they get rid of bananas and Laurel and Wes. And then they're like, yeah, we're gonna win it all. But then, like, in the final, they completely shit the bed, and they lose, and they haven't been seen since. That's going to be Cam and Leroy. That's my prediction. Like, it's, they're going to dominate the regular season, but once they get to the playoffs, they're, <laughs> they're going to fail. Okay, so let's move on to Nelson and Amber M versus Leroy and Casey. Um, Leroy and Nelson both fall together. Leroy ends up winning. Good for him. They didn't really like, zoom in on the moment that someone was, you know, like, I like that. Why not show why Leroy won, you know? I'm just suspicious is all, right? Oh, uh, I think it was space. Maybe. Like maybe. I don't know. Well, like, why not show us? Why not zoom in? Like, they've zoomed in on Wes and uh, Natalie, right? Where they show fingers holding on. They show toes dragging, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then really quick, Casey throws over Amber M. I just want to say this. Amber M suddenly caught my eye. I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's, like, totally fucking adorable and shit. And I think the reason why I can notice it now is because in the previous episode, I fell out of my little crush that I had for Big T. I no longer think of Big T as, like, someone who I want to look forward to seeing on an episode because she treated Jonathan like shit or Jacob, whatever the fuck. Right? Wow. Well, that was yeah. part of the reason I like Big T. <laughs> well, for me... Real. But when someone's a shitty partner, she's not afraid to, like, work against them. Uh, I, I, oh, no. That we, was, like, an admirable uh, thing to me. That's what I like about her. <laughs> well, okay, we clearly have two different types, right? I like good girls... Um, and what's the opposite of a good girl? <laughs> but anyways, what I'm saying is Amber M, adorable. Like, all of a sudden, I was like, oh, my God. We're, like, I, I barely seen you this season. And, well, this is the third episode. But, yeah, I think she's okay, cute. So one question. <laughs> Who is Amber M? There's two Ambers, and I can't keep them straight. <laughs> Who's her partner? Uh, uh, Nelson. Amber M is with Nelson. Amber B is with Darrell. Okay, so yeah. Amber M, she has like the blondish curly hair. No, that's Amber B. That's Amber B. Yes, that's she goes against Casey. Casey throws her off. Casey's like, I've played fucking touch football and shit or whatever the fuck, full contact. Um, I say, Casey, you should sign up for Legends Football League, aka Lingerie Football League. No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um moving so, so on. Like with the Ambers, the one that you're saying is cute. I think she's a bit of a two face. Sometimes you see her and she looks really cute. Sometimes she looks really not cute. And I don't understand wow. if it's the lighting, uh what it is. But sometimes the camera will catch her and she's not good looking at all. She's kind of frightening. Holy smokes. Holy smacks, Dave. Uh That's if my take. If only you were if only you were this close to me, I'd slap you across the head. Like, yeah, what are you thinking there? Eh? I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, now, that, now that I've said it, now that I've said it, you'll notice it. You know, because have you ever been <laughs> eating food and someone's like, mm, it tastes a little bitter, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, it does, and then it ruins it for you. That's what I'm trying to do with her. <laughs> I'm trying to ruin her for you. So the next time you see her, you're like, oh, yeah, maybe she doesn't look good. I mean, you'll just start you know, to second line. I, I notice that Coors tastes like water sometimes. Yep, now it's ruined. It kind of does. This yeah. coffee kind of tastes burnt. Mm. <laughs> Is it burnt? Oh, shit. Starbucks coffee does <laughs> burnt. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, to oh, this is the last. This is the last group right here. 
CT and Big T versus Fessian and Anissa. Let's go to Anissa versus Big T. She's pushed off by Anissa. There was no surprise. Um, uh, Big T said she's never been in a physical altercation before. CT is like, I wish that was true for me. Wink, <laughs> you know, to the camera and shit like that. They should have cut to, like, all his fights on the seasons and stuff like that. You know? Yeah. Then they could be like, CT... There's no good drama this season, so we just have to show. You got to show the replay of the previous seasons when I was excited. Yeah. Now we just have yeah, Josh what, screaming and crying. Yeah. What do What do you guys th- think this is? The final episode of Seinfeld? Eh? Basically, a clip show. <laughs> okay, so Anissa does push Big T off, but CT and Fessy they time out. Did you think yeah. this was going to happen? Or did you think Fessy was like, get the fuck out of here, old man, or what? Fessy should have won this. He was a Division <laughs> One football player. Like, come on, yeah. Fessy. Like, I don't care if C- – like, CT and Fessy are basically the same size. Like, height, weight. And Fessy, he used to be a football player. Like, come on. Like, you know how to, like, push somebody off, you know? Like, I'm, I'm disappointed in Fessy here. Like, come on, dude. Like, I know it's CT, um, but still, he should have been able to get it done. But instead, like, what do we see when they go at each other? All they're doing is, like, ripping each other's shirts. We're seeing, like, <laughs> beer bellies on both guys, and they're just rolling around on the ground. Very for the most – I will say, I will say that for the most part, um, CT was on the bottom trying to engage, trying to tangle up a leg, you know, that sort of thing. Try and work at a different angle. Fessy was mostly on top, just kind of pushing him, keeping him at bay. So I don't think, yeah, I, I think I think we should also be proud of CT and maybe a little disappointed by Fessy. But at the same time, remember when CT out pulled that one NFL dude in champs versus stars or pros? Pros. Remember that? Yeah. Why can't we why can't we just remember that CT still has those magic moments in him where he pulls off these ridiculous things, you know? If CT would have been like if he would have played like high school football and college football, he could have probably gotten the same level as Fessy. I think that's what we learned. You know? He was too busy smoking cigarettes and fucking the cheerleaders, you know. Being on the real world. Yeah. Pushing pushing little Adam into the streets. Of Paris. <laughs> <Okay. When you're> <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I think maybe that was CT's big moment where he had to pull out the, you know, the the afterburners just to survive Fessy. So yeah. maybe he has no more know, moments. I was, I was expecting this. big things from it, and it was just, it was just disappointing. Just everything, yeah, gonna... everything in this entire mission. I thought it was going to be cool. That like the coolest thing ended up being uh, Nicole's shoulder. Like that was about it. <laughs> Yes, in a very morbid sort of way. Yeah, that was the coolest thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I I don't know. I, I'll kind of disagree with the CT Fessy thing. To me, that's Darrell and Leo. You know what I mean? Who knew that Leo would be put up on the Mount Rushmore of uh, wrestling that goes nowhere, right? Can't tell. All right. Um, okay, so going back to the house, uh, stuff's gone, Dave. All the peanut butter and Nicole's stuff. Turns oh, yeah. out she's medically DQ'd. Uh, doctor stoppage. Um, you know, yeah. And this is the okay, second so time like, she's. She, yeah, go this on. makes no sense to me at all. They immediately tell her, like, no, you can't compete. You have to go home. However, Liv ends up coming back and she's like, well, they took an x ray, but we have to wait until a radiologist reads it. So we're not going to know until the morning. But it was like, how did Nicole get like results right away? But well, her bone was sticking out, though, right? But it was just a dislocation. Like, oh. there's, I don't know, or maybe, maybe it was very obvious on the X-ray. But you know, I don't know. But again, I mean, I feel like again, there's two uh, different standards here. I feel like we should have both had to wait till the, you know, the next day or until we get results back, or I don't know, because if it was just a dislocation. You can kind of pop it back in and you're fine. Like, that can happen with a, a shoulder dislocation. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't tell me that. I've seen Lethal Weapon, too. I've seen Mel yeah. Gibson wear that straight jacket and pop it back in or whatever. Yeah. 
<laughs> but uh, you know what I think it is, Dave? I think someone said radiology, and you're like, what? What? That's me. This better be 100% accurate. <laughs> exactly. Well, like, okay, so I work in a hospital, so when, like, I want to see consistency. You need consistency right. for every patient, all right? The consistency is key. It's king. Yeah. And I didn't see it here. It was just like, ah, oh, Nicole, ah, oh, you're gone. Like, live. Well, you you can stay for the night and hang out, and we'll see what happens. And it was just like, mm, no. <laughs> well, okay. The only thing I will say, because this is in retrospect, all her stuff is missing, right? Yeah. But they never straight up say, and this is what's going to cause a big snowball effect. They never say, Devin, your partner's out, even though all her stuff's gone, right? But this, seeing all of her stuff gone, Devin's goes on this almost like a suicidal, like, uh, uh, cruise, cruising for a bruise. And he's like, fuck it. Who gives a shit? I might as well go in. Uh, big brother sucks and all this other stuff. And, and he's not going to be told officially that Nicole's gone until the elimination, right? It's it's yeah. really weird. Like, yeah. So it's very strange because Devin, he's like, he doesn't have a partner anymore. And he's just going to start, like, picking on the, you know, just yelling out, Big Brother sucks. And just annoying Josh and Casey and the Big Brother people. And, like, Devin is just going to get drunk and just, you know, piss people off. Was he drunk? The thing is, they're like, Devin, he's under the mindset that this is a girl's elimination week. Everyone is under that mindset, right? Yeah. But then suddenly it's not because Nicole's gone. They're just like, well, now we're doing guys' elimination, even though we thought it was going to be a girl's elimination. So it was like, I think Devin thought he had like a free ticket to just like kind of be crazy and be letting up frustration because I thought, I think like Devin thought to himself like, Oh, I'm just like a free agent now, and somebody else will pick me, and I'll get a new partner. That's what right. he was thinking in his head, I think. But we don't really know. Well, I mean that that could have been the case. And if I'm a female, I would say I would rather go in for a gold skull because men already got a gold skull. Now it's going to be another man elimination. I would be like, fuck that. I think the. The, the drive to get a gold skull is bigger than the drive of like, well, thank God there's no eliminations tonight. You know what I mean? That's yeah. that's my opinion on it, you know? Um, okay, so anyways, we'll get back into that, all all this stuff with Devin, but we have to... Oh, They're giving out more gold skulls to the guys than the other girls at this point. Yeah. Which is not yeah, fair, exactly. because there's only 10 of them. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's just... It's a, a weird thing about production this year where it's like, you know, the, they did it in the first week where they're like, oh, it's girls instead of guys. So it wasn't Wes and CT. It was their partners going against each other. And then now it's not girls, it's guys again. So at some point, they're going to have to do it again to even it out to make sure that the girls go in twice in a row. And they're going to, you know, they'll do it in some blindside way, which is going to throw everything for a loop again. And it's going to be a surprise. So. We know that's going to happen, I feel like. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and the argument that kind of like Devin finds himself in, he kind of he kind of uh, puts himself into this, kind of like how Josh does. But let's start with how the whole house argument starts with CT and Casey. Remember this? Yeah. CT's like, hey, uh, Casey, you're making a pizza, a microwavable pizza in an oven. I wish I could be using that oven to make my eggs or something like that. That is a typical roommate argument, right? Like, like yeah. if we were roommates or not even, I'd be like, why are you using the oven for a microwavable pizza, right? Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with little Tiff, but Josh is like, what the fuck? And gets involved. It was so annoying. As soon as he, as soon as he looked up to see what was going on, I already knew what was going to happen, you know? Oh, yeah. And then, like, cut to Josh, yeah. and he's like, I didn't want to get involved with anything, but uh, I'm going to stand up for my big brother friends. Oh, and it's just like, my God. shut up, Josh. And, like, the whole, yeah. okay, so, like, the CT and Casey thing about using a, a microwave pizza in an oven, 
Casey is 100% right. If you microwave a pizza, <laughs> it's still going to be soft and soggy. But if you do it in the oven, it'll be crispy. It'll be a better piece of pizza. So, Casey, I right get on that. You need to, you know, I'm sorry, bro. If you're making an egg omelet, you don't need the oven. You need to do it on the stovetop, all right? Damn it. Oh, was it the – yeah, it, like an egg omelet thing, yeah. Um, although, okay, so – with that, I, I I just assumed she was she was using the oven, and I do agree. Yeah, right. It's so much crispier than a, like you really shouldn't microwave any pizza, and I've had plenty of microwavable microwavable pizzas. I'm like gross. That's fucking gross. Yeah, right? it's never good. Yeah, but either way though, this is a just typical like roommate argument nothing too bad at all so that's when josh was like what the fuck and so by this time ct's left and he's outside josh walks up and what is ct doing do you remember no he's smoking a cigarette dave <laughs> after oh, no. his loss after his loss with in x's one remember that shit where everyone was like dude you smoke a pack and a half a day like that's why you lost and shit like that because it was like high elevation Remember, in like CT lost dirty thirty. That was high elevation. What is he doing smoking again? That oh, is no, insane. Wagon, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was said that he was technically separated from his wife at that point. So maybe that he's like, you know, Virginia Slims are. He doesn't smoke Virginia Slims. What do you think, Marlboro? Uh, uh... I don't know. What are they smoking in Boston? It's going to be something weird. You know? I, I feel like it's yeah. Newport. 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 Yeah. Newport. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll, I'll accept it. I'll accept it. Uh, yeah, okay. So anyways. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, like, Josh goes up and he's like, hey, man, I don't, I don't want to... Do you remember exactly what Josh said? I'm forgetting. He's like, I don't want to start a rift between us, or I don't want to have a falling out between us, or something like that. Well, what, like... what happens? <laughs> what happens is Josh walks out, and immediately CT's like, "What's up?" And Josh is like, "So what happened between you and Casey?" And immediately CT's like, "Stop!" Like he already knows what's gonna happen. He already knows that Josh is gonna make this a thing, right? I just yeah. love that that total like CT immediately was like fucking don't basically by saying stop, you know he knew what was gonna fucking happen. Ugh. And luckily for you, you said that you watched this half an hour afterwards, so you can forward through commercials. I would forward through this fucking fight. A anything Josh related really is like I I don't care anymore. You know, ugh. It's 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 really bad. Yeah. I don't know. He, it, it was like the first episode this season. I was like, "Oh, Josh is with Cam. Maybe, maybe I'll like Josh now that he has a good partner. Maybe, maybe this will finally be the season where I, I, I'll come around on him and I'll, I'll start to like him." And then it's just like immediately you're just reminded, like, "No, nah, Josh is the worst." <laughs> he he. Uh, so he says, "Casey is crying right now." So CT goes inside. And he Casey immediately just, just like walks away from Josh. He's like, I'm going inside. <laughs> yeah. And Casey's there, she, like, and she's completely chill. See, he comes up and he's like, hey, like, what's going on? You know, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry that things got out of hand. You know, he was just like authentically saying like, hey, I didn't realize, that, you know, I thought this wasn't shit, but I'm sorry that I made you so upset. And she's like, dude, it's fine. I'm fine. And she's like, it's just Josh said that you were crying. And that's when Josh is like, no, I said she was upset. Roll the fucking tape. Roll the tape. And they did. I just wish that they would have rolled the tape on other things, like when Bananas says complete bullshit or when Jordan says bullshit, you know? Roll the tape then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, Josh is completely... I don't know. He's just an idiot. There's no reason to even make this a thing because it's not a thing. He tries to make it a thing. And, like, this is the problem with this season, the fact that this is happening. Because I feel like Josh knows that every night in the house, it's super fucking boring. People just, they make their food, they sit around. Like, there's, 
nothing interesting is happening. There's no romances going on. We can't be like having people flirting or like cheating on each other or any of that. It's just, all right, let's get in a fight over some pizza. And jo- you have to like, you know, like Nani, we haven't gotten that part of the season yet, but every season she has that one night where she just has to pick a fight with one of her old friends, like Anissa, and get into a fight. Like Josh is doing it on this episode where he just has to pick a fight just so something happens in the episode. Okay, well, now some people could could rise to his his defense because this is the moment where it kind of dies down, right? But then Devin says, Big Brother sucks. And then that's when Josh is like, well, I wasn't willing to get physical with CT, but I'll get physical with you. And that's when like people are trying to get in between them. Security comes in and shit. Devin is like, what's eight times nine? He says, he says, <laughs> what's eight times nine? <laughs> the only problem with this, though, is that he says it a lot, but it might be just producers like having him re- repeat the line over and over. We've experienced that, you know, where it's just producers and editing magic or whatever, you know? Well, yeah, so it did seem... Three or four times in a row because Josh wasn't answering the question. <laughs> <laughs> he keep asking the question until Josh answered it. He wouldn't or couldn't. Uh, maybe Josh did. Maybe he answered it in Morse code because he, like, punched the fucking side of the building, remember? Yeah. Yeah. It's hardcore. I hope they took right? it out of his paycheck. They are like, hey... <laughs> We bought this at Lowe's, all right? (laughs) This cost us $34 a square foot. (laughs) Um, Before we get into into deliberation, uh, real quick, I think it's Devin, Wes, and Nam. They're they're trying to say, hey, we're going to try and get people to vote in for Corey and Tori in there. Um, Yeah, it's just a quick little see before we go into deliberation. Now that we're there, that's when Devin says, I want to go in. Um, and if not me, I think the other, the other, uh, possibility, the other option is Corey and Tori. Now this is where Tori's like, fuck you. And then we get a little background. Apparently Devin and Tori were on a show together called Second Chances. No. I don't know. It, it sounded like made up and fake to me. Cause really? it was just like, <laughs> I, I've never heard of those two being on that show. They've both been on the challenge for what, like four, probably four seasons a piece or something like that. Never yeah. once have I heard a mention of this. And then all of a sudden now they like pulled it out and they're like, yeah, this is motivation and why they don't like each other. And I was like, really? Okay. That seems just random. That kind of reminds me of that one random time. Sarah Rice brought up that she was fat when she was a kid, and she's like, this is my motivation and stuff like that. Do you remember anything like that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, oh, okay. It's like, motivation out of nowhere, and you're like, what? You've never mentioned this before. I feel like you're just kind of coming up with, like, a, you know, a fake contrived reason to, you know, I'm not saying it didn't happen, but it's like, you're kind of just using something as you're trying to make a reason up out of nowhere because there is no right. reason. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, because she was like nine se- seasons in and she's like, I was fat once <laughs> like when I was a kid. <laughs> so stupid. Okay, uh, so during the deliberation, Wes says, like, you guys fell for a smoke screen, vote in Corey and Tori. Um, I, th- I think it's just because the young bucks decided to vote him in. Um, and then Josh and Devin bicker some more. Josh says, like, uh, I'll vote in Devin no matter what. And that's when Devin says, shut up, shut up, shut up. But he does say it a bunch. So I'm like, is it editing? Or is Devin really that, like, a loss for words? <laughs> He's just like, he'll keep on saying one thing to Josh. I don't know. And if Josh loses it, I would lose it too. When someone doesn't have anything original to say, they just stick to a little, you know, a little uh, sound bite. Fuck that. <laughs> They just keep repeating the same. Shut up, shut up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. I feel like Nicole does that in arguments. I feel like, yeah. Nani did that once where she's like, know your role. Know your role. Or like, uh, I don't give a fuck. Oh my God. It, All like right, so let's... Tons and tons of motivation to like tear someone down, but you have no material. So then you just got <laughs> to repeat the same thing over and over. Yeah, that you're 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 just a button masher in my eyes in a video game sort of sense, yep. right? 
Okay, so let's get into the uh, secret vote portion. Everyone votes or whatever, but that's when Leroy and Casey comes in and find out that it is indeed Devin and Nicole are the compromised agents. Um, real quick, the teams that voted that are together, Corey and Tori, Leroy, Amber M, CT, Big T, Darrell, Amber B, J, Teresa, Fessy, Anissa, Josh, Nani, Leo, and Gabby. They all said, yeah, Devin, you want to go in. You voted yourself in and you were kind of annoying. You're going in. But Lolo did not vote with Nam. Lolo, Lolo voted for this. Cam voted. Kyle didn't, right? And then Mecky voted. And Gabby, what? Gabby, Mecky, something? Fuck. I don't know. I just want to point that out sometimes. Like some teams aren't voting together. I feel like yeah. it's significant, right? Okay, so, but mostly significant is the fact that Leroy and Casey, they don't trust each other. And, you know, to them, they're not even on the same team, really. She's like, I'm with Big Brother, he's with Cam, you know, and I'm not going to, I'm going to be purposefully vague with him, you know? And so I think it's really weird, yeah. Yeah, I, but they don't it trust makes you. sense because, like, even though you have partners this season, it's definitely a solo game because you can switch partners at any point, you know? You never know what's going to happen at the end of an episode. Someone could – you're going to change partners. So your alliances are not necessarily going to match up with your partner. You you have your own alliance, and it's just going to – it's going to work itself out because, you know, by the time you – if you just want to survive – by the time you get to the final, you might not have the same partner. Exactly. But <clears throat> another thing, I think that they say, oh, we got to see everyone who voted. I wish we could see more of that. And then they had a conversation. They're like, do we tell anyone? Again, this is – they don't know that Fessy already told other people. They don't know that. So they both say, like, do we tell anyone? And, again, they kind of – they uh, withdraw information from each other. You know, they, they, yeah, they keep it away and shit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So on to the next scene. Wes talks to Leroy and Cam, and he basically tries to say, hey, what's going on here? We were, uh, you know, in episode one, you guys said, we're going to get rid of the champs. I feel like that was wrong. Why can't we get back to not where it was, but where it should have been the entire time, guys? And the whole time, Leroy might be listening, but Cam is like, don't you listen. We're going to vote him <laughs> in, right? We're going to stick with the script, right? Well, yeah, because uh, in episode two, Leroy voted for what Wes wanted the vote to be. So Leroy was kind of like, you know, friends with Wes because they've known each other for a long time. So he kind of voted with him because he voted in, uh, what's his name, Joseph and Big T. Yes. So, yes. But then this episode, I think, you know, Cam gets wind of that, and she has to, hey, Leroy, you have to do my bidding. And she's making sure that Leroy is going against Wes. And I think Wes kind of noticed that, like, hey, you know, I'm going to try and talk to them both and see if I can, you know kind of cultivate some kind of friendship and be like, hey, can we come to an agreement here? But Cam, Cam is not having it. <laughs> On to the elimination, right? Yeah. It's revealed that Devin is the compromised agent. That's when TJ finally says, hey, guess what? Uh, everyone knew this, but now I'm saying it now. Nicole is out of the game. You know? Yeah. Yeah. TJ and, it, like, it's, it's so strange to me. The fact that people are going in and they're voting Devin and Nicole in when Nicole's not even in the house. How can you vote in a person who's not even in the game anymore? They're gone. Yeah. So yeah, this is I don't know. It just it seemed bullshitty to me. Like there should have been some kind of clarification as to what exactly was gonna happen. Like, I don't know. It's like can can we at least know the rules somewhat? Like, can you say, like, hey, this is going to be a guy's elimination or a girl's elimination this week? At least tell people that before they go into a vote. Instead, I think a lot of people, they might have been thinking, well, Nicole's not even here, so I'm just, and it's a girl's elimination week, so I'm just going to vote her in because she's already gone. So it's almost like a throwaway vote. But it's not. It means Devin's going to go in. 
there's yeah, I don't know. There's no clarification of the rules and the premise. So you're constantly just like, who the fuck knows what's going to happen? Um, <clears throat> okay, so Leroy declines to go against Devin. Um, and TJ doesn't give that whole thing like, do you guys realize that there's only ton skulls, right? He's not trying to like guilt trip Leroy into going in like he did Fessy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, come on, look, consistency, TJ. Come on. Don't show bias, yeah. fucker. <laughs> yeah. um, so he does decline. He says, I don't trust Wes, so I'm going to throw him in. And Casey, I forgot that they both get a vote. Casey's like, yeah, I'm going to vote with Wes or, or vote with Leroy and put in Wes. Yeah, we have yet to see two teams disagree, right? Yeah. Uh, I, uh, it never made sense. Like, it's never made sense even in past seasons when you have two people making a vote, like, and if they disagree, then it's just like, well, and then it's just like something random. We don't know what's going to happen. They'll just be like, well, because it's a tie, uh, Devin, you're going to choose who you go against, you know? It'll just we've be something had something random, like that. You know? Yeah, we've had something like that, yeah. Or in Zach's case, he's like, well, let's just go in elimination then because we can't decide. Remember that one moment with oh, yeah. him and Amanda? Yeah. That was so stupid. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was stupidest, hilarious. Stupidest it was hilarious because Zach was wi willing to send himself home over a petty <laughs> argument where he dislikes someone. He's like, I don't fucking care. I'll go home. Whatever. Let's go in. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't listen to women. Uh, Zach is a classic woman hater. Uh, there should be a video out there eventually. Maybe I'll make it. Compilation video? <laughs> yes. Compilation. Um, okay, so let's get into the elimination itself. It's called Snapping Point, and this is should should be billed as Bergman versus Clark 2. They've gone against elimination before. Do you remember? No, not really. What oh, by it? the way, by the way, Wes is thrown in, like we said. But no, yeah. champs versus stars. Remember where they had like patches on each other or something like that, where they had to like wrestle and like try and take something off, something like that. Okay, um, yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, that at all. no. no? Wes, oh. which is why Bergman is before Clark. You know the UFC rules, right? The, the guy who last won is the first name. You didn't know that? I had no idea that Clark was Devin's last name. Oh. Well, this is, is awkward. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. Is that really his last name? Yes. <laughs> I don't know why I would put a different last name. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, they, they, they went against each other in that other season, the spinoff. And they were friends on that one. They were working together, you know? So, yeah. Um, so I don't really have too much written down. I just have the fact that this is one of the most boring elimination uh, types there is. I've never really been a fan. I feel like this is the trivia of missions where I'm like, I don't like seeing this shit. The most exciting thing Elimination where they're tied to each other and they have to pull each other was Timmy versus Derek in Gauntlet 2. That's it. Because why? You have a big dude and a little guy with, with lots of heart, but Timmy pulls him, right? Any other elimination, it's them for hours lying there, right? Yeah. Not Remember all... Room. Yes. All the Gauntlet 3 eliminations, all the free the free agent ones, you know? It was. It's always the same, right? It was like, was it Car Maria and Naya or Camilla yeah. and Naya, or something like Car that? Car Maria and Naya. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, the, the, this one was not as good because at least in those older ones, <clears throat> at least in those older ones, there was enough room between where the length of the rope was and themselves and the bell they had to ring or the button they had to push, at least there was some distance there. This one, they, once they get to the end of the rope, it's basically like, oh, you have to go two more feet before you can push the button. And I was like, why don't you push it back another five feet so you actually have to drag your opponent backward. You know, they have to go backwards. You have to go forward at least like five feet and make it competitive. And 
I get that it's going to be boring for, you know, like an hour while they kind of just sit there and tire each other out. But at least, you know, it's kind of an endurance thing. And that's right. the, the winner's going to come down to endurance if they're a similar size. This one is just like, it just came down to who was the first, the fastest out of the gate. And that was Devin. Devin was faster because once they completely pull the slack out of the rope, Devin is a good, like, three feet closer than Wes. And, like, Wes says, <laughs> Wes says, once we get there, it's, like, identical and we're neck and neck. And it was like, no, you're not. Not at all. Like, it was not even close. Devin was a full body length ahead of where Wes was. And it's like, he just had to go, like, two feet and touch that button. Like, it was right there. Um, the, the, the other thing I want to throw at this is that, okay, so it's called snapping point, right? That would make me think the whole thing is, like, how long does this take until someone breaks uh, psychologically or physically where they can no longer pull? This was really quick, right? I mean, they, they never showed us the time. They never said, like, oh, they're there for hours, right? It's just I feel like this was very short, which is fine because if you have to have one of these things, I'd rather see a shorter one because going back to free agents, you had Kara and Naya there for like three hours, four hours, right? And after that, they had like fuck the straps were cut into their shoulder blades and stuff like that. It was terrible. The next time they had it, it was against Jordan versus Swift. And what they did was they had like six feet of rope leading up to their bell. So whoever got to the rope first just had to like, you know, climb <laughs> and drag themselves up. So they already knew, producers already knew this is a lame thing to watch, right? So yeah, they yeah. really kind of like, yeah, so changed it up. Nice and close. So it's like uh, someone will get there like almost immediately. Yeah. So by that but by that logic, like, why? Why even put it at all if you don't want them to pull for hours? You know, because it's, it's I don't know. I, I don't think it's nice to watch. I, I think Gauntlet 3 really hurt because there was a lot of elimina eliminations like that where they were just stuck in the sand, not budging. You know, there was a lot of that. All right. Um, okay, so eventually Devin wins. And when Wes is leaving, he says, I won a couple times. Um, you never want to like look back uh, or and and say like, oh, I voted in my best friend, or I like, you know, I cheated, I lied, and stuff like that to get the win. Because you want to look back and be proud of your accomplishments as a champion. And then what is? And then finally, he's like, with all that being said, everybody gang up on Leroy, <laughs> and then he takes. It out. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a nice blend of like super somber and like, kind of funny at the end. You know, I'm like, God damn it, that's why we like you, Wes. But okay, so this is touching on that moment where we were talking before, where it's like, did you, you know, champions lie to win? You know, champions cheat and shit like that. I will argue that Wes has cheated. And has lied and has possibly put in his friends, but he never did win to do it. He won cleanly, I would say, on Duel One and on Rivals Two. But that's that like that is the problem, is the fact that he those two wins he had, he didn't really need to lie or cheat or anything to win those. However, repeatedly since then he's always like lie cheat steal like cut deals throw people under the bus it's like Wes if you don't need to be doing that stuff then don't do that stuff but Wes <laughs> thinks he needs to do that stuff to get another win I I I agree that Wes okay this is how I view it right Wes he's a showboat he knows how to put out material for a show with this little speech he he really made me miss him a lot what he's saying is, yeah, you don't you don't want to cheat to win. And he's, but he's won without cheating it. I, I think he's saying of he's he's bullshitting, but yet telling the truth. He tactically never did have to cheat on those two seasons that he did win, but he did cheat on other seasons. He just didn't win. I think that's the beauty of Wes. He's saying like. I want to make Leroy feel bad and, you know, make him look like the bad person, make me look like the sympathetic per 
person. But at the same time, he is saying a truth. He technically didn't lie and cheat on those particular seasons that he won. And that's why I think it's a perfect way to drop, you know, dip out on. I don't know. <laughs> it's, I would have to go back and watch those seasons, like specifically, <laughs> and like look for any way that he lied or cheated or something in some way. Right. But, like, off the top of my head, like, those two seasons, I don't think he needed to. Because in the dual one, that was where you would have – was it the winner of the mission would pick one person. And then that one person would pick another person. And they would just take turns until there was two people remaining at the end. So because Wes kind of – he was part of the group of, like, veterans. And there was always people, like, lower in the pecking order – he would never, there was never like a big team vote or anything like that. So you didn't really need to do any type of stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> more specifically, if someone were to argue right now, they would be like, what about Evan? Remember when Evan was like, Wes, you did me dirty. You know you did. And I'll never forgive you for this. Because what? Because he felt like he was wrong by Wes. I would argue, and probably you would too, because Wes was like, hey, Evan, you pick CT for elimination, and I'll pick Brad and Derek. That's a pretty good deal if you, you know, if like in retrospect, you know, like that was amazing because Wes eventually did take out Derek. So Wes is taking care of at least half of his side of the bargain. So that's what that Evan was, is like. That was completely Evan. Evan <laughs> always, that was his biggest problem was he's like, all right, I'll go into elimination and I'll get rid of Johnny Bananas, uh, you know, or I'll go in, I'll get rid of CT. Like, he always had this ego to him where he wanted to go into the elimination and get rid of somebody, and it, it backfired a lot. And it was like, it was never like Evan would kind of just get talked into it, but somebody would bring it up, and Evan would just go along with it. And it wasn't yeah. like someone, like, switching a vote to send Evan in. It was always Evan agreeing to do it on his own. So, oh yeah, uh, and then and then um, you know if if anyone like Wes was clean in terms of rivals too. If anything, his partner might have been dirty because that was the girl vote, and that's when he was kind of stringing along DM the entire time and shit like that. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah Wes was Wes is clean in terms of his wins. He's totally clean. <laughs> yeah, that, the rival season was weird because it was. The girls would vote for the guys, and then the guys would vote for the girls, yeah, which was weird. kind of it made it like a weird alliance, you know, because you just had to have like girls, and like the girls, if you had an alliance with them, it didn't really matter to them because they weren't going to face you in a final. So you would have the powerful girl teams would look out for the powerful guy teams, you yeah. Know? Yeah, that's that's where a lot of politicking, or at least yeah. the slight it, hint of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like with that premise, you just you didn't need to backstab anyone. So it was like Wes on those seasons when he didn't when he was put into a season where the premise didn't involve backstabbing each other, he actually won because I don't know. It, it was just it kind of worked out that way because of those seasons. But on these other seasons when it was uh. What was it, Cutthroat? When he's like yeah. sabotaging his team? No, no, that was Ruins. Ruins. Ruins, yeah. And he's like trying him and Kenny and Derek and like they all hate each other on the team and he's just trying to sabotage everything. I don't know. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to say, Wes, he uh, he had a great parting line. I personally rem I prefer when he does take that season or two off. You know, I feel like that does him some good usually, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Are we gonna see Wes again? Could this be the last time we see him? I don't see why not. I mean, I, there was a title uh, or a title, an article titled on stopbeingpolite.com where they're like, "Is this the end of Wes with two early, you know, outs or whatever? Is that the end?" I'm like, dude. Uh, no, I should have been. I should have typed in and said, like, stop being polite.com. Michael, uh, the future is Michael. You are totally wrong. Look up when Wes left in episode two of X is One. 
and then episode one of Battle of the Seasons immediately after that. I, as a Wes fan, thought he was done. I was like, oh, fuck, Wes, retire. But then he comes back for Rivals 2 and wins. So, yeah. I, I, I do believe he should take a season off, but I don't think he's done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And, like, Johnny Bananas, he's come out, and he had a couple seasons where he got eliminated quickly. But then he came back, and he just won this last season. You know, asterisk. Got second place last season, but <laughs> you know you, you can just because you get knocked out early in the game, that doesn't mean that you're not a good competitor. It's literally the opposite. The reason that they voted him in was because they were all scared of him, like yeah. Fessy, Nelson, Corey, Cam, Anissa. They're all fucking terrified of Wes, and that's why they wanted to get rid of him. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so finally, uh, Devin won. He gets a gold skull. That's awesome that he gets to go in the final. We'll assume, I mean, I don't know, someone already said, like, Devin's probably going to go in again, something like that. But he gets to pick a partner, and he picks Tori. Which, this How do you feel about this? Um, I thought it was, it kind of blindsided me. I almost thought... That what was going to happen, I'm trying to think in my head, who's he going to pick? And I'm like, will he pick Cam? Maybe Cam will get a new partner like two episodes in a row. Because Cam is a good, powerful girl partner, and she's got the political side of it, you know? And he's maybe, he'll try and infiltrate that alliance because his alliance member in West just went home. So I thought that could possibly happen. But he ends up picking Tori, who's this other, I feel like it's like Cam... Lolo and Tori and maybe Casey. Those three girls are probably like the top girls, I would say. I think Natalie's up there, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Natalie's yeah, up she, there. She's well. kind of up there. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so when, when he chooses Tori, and remember, we already know that they didn't get along on this one season or whatever, right? Um, I had, I had uh, um, flashes of Biden choosing Kamala Harris. <laughs> oh, right. he, you know what I mean? Like he chooses someone where like you really put me to task on that and you called me out on my bullshit, but you're good. Let's fucking just work together. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Like so that's that's the kind of feeling that I had right there. I'm like, yeah, fuck like who gives a shit? Toy's not gonna self-sabotage. I don't think they hate each other that much, you know? Yeah, so and I think. Devin's better than Corey as a partner, right? I th I think it's kind of a wash. I don't know. Really? I think Corey oh, wow. is a little bit better physically, but I think Devin is better mentally. Um, however, I think for Tori, I think it's better that Tori have a good friendship relationship with the person that she's partnered with because it keeps her in a positive mindset, and I think she plays better that way. So I think the dynamic that she doesn't really get along with Devin and they're not really friends, I think that it's going to be tough for her. And I could see Tori going into a girl's elimination and trying to take out one of these weaker girls and Tori immediately picking a different partner. I think Tori is going to put herself in, get a new partner, and kick Devin aside. I, that's my prediction. Right, and it makes me think of, remember when uh, Tori was with Derek, her ex, on Final Reckoning, and it was just yeah. horrible to watch? She was like, you're such a fuck up, and Derek's like, I just happened to not win this particular mission, but let's be positive. And she's like, fuck you. Like, she just yeah. had it, because she did not like her partner. So I hope that, I hope we're not in store for that, because that was pretty terrible. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, so Corey automatically gets Natalie. Yeah, uh, I mean that's that's kind of a lateral move. I feel like that's. I think Natalie's a strong girl as well. Um, it might even be better because Natalie doesn't. She can automatically just join Corey's alliance now, because Natalie had to be in Wes's alliance because they were partners. But now, now that Wes is gone, Natalie can automatically just join their alliance. Um. There's no target on her back necessarily because she doesn't really have a history with anyone the way that Tori does. Because there are girls that don't like Tori and they know she's a super strong competitor. So she was going to be targeted at some point, but I don't think Natalie will. 
Interesting. I just feel okay. like Natalie is going to seamlessly join this alliance with, you know, Anissa and Fessy and Corey and Nelson and all that. And I think she's going to work with them. And I think she's going to go right towards the end. And she's got a gold skull, you know? I, I and on that note, she's in a great position. And on that note, with the with the gold skull, um, that is cool and shit. But uh, I just want to say, when are we going to see these fucking gold skulls? Remember in uh, Vendetta's, I think it was, where like after you won an elimination, it was so stupid. But I'd rather see this than nothing. Where TJ's like, now you win a grenade, and there was like a trophy case or something, and there was three yeah. grenades. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. The grenades turned out to be duds, so to speak. But had TJ came up with like a gold skull of some sort, you know, that would be cool, like an Oscar or something like that. That'd be great. Yeah. That's all that's all I needed to make it seem more official that they're going to the final. I need to see something, you know? Yeah. I don't remember what was that season where they would pick out if you had to like do go into the draw, you had to put your hand in that thing and you had to pick out a black skull or a white skull, and that meant if you were going in. Yeah, it'd be like Rival a little three. toy. Rival three. Oh, it was so bad. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm surprised it didn't do that. Give him like a little. Oh yeah, because it was all like themed like a uh, uh, Day of the Dead, like m like a me that Mexican holiday. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 It was all yeah. themed after that. And I think that might be technically a real thing. Like they have these little bitty skulls and shit, but it's just that it didn't translate on camera for me as a TV show. I needed it to be like life size skull. You know, that's why yeah. I needed. it. It needs to be more than an inch and a half tall. Ooh, it <laughs> yeah, it looked like a little like toy that you get out in a, in a grocery store, like for like twenty five cents or something. Uh, exactly. Okay, but okay, that's the end of the episode. Overall, I like I don't know. Um, it was it was fine to finally talk about this episode, but I think like it was kind of a dip. I'm hoping that the next episode is more richer and maybe there was a reason why they couldn't air last week you know maybe they're like this episode's so good we had to edit it twice <laughs> you know just to kind of yeah. i don't know Dude, it's, or maybe it's, it's a like, double episode it's gonna be like that uh rise of skywalker movie where it's just like they look at the final product they're like we need to re-edit everything like change these scenes pull this out add this in and they're just because they know it was bad to begin with and then they're going to edit the shit out of it it's going to be even worse and we're just going to be like oh man this is disappointing they're they're sifting through all the footage of josh getting into arguments with people uh... sifting through all the footage of nani getting into arguments with people like what do we have to work with here <laughs> god sounds awful um but that, hey that was the end of the episode it's it's all uh the next episode is going to be in like three days i want to say because it's uh, monday right now right yeah yeah so uh you know we've been late before and it sucks and we're even we're even more late actually i, I don't know why i, why I want to say we're on time we're actually still late but yeah. uh, the, the problem is, is the episodes air normally on a Wednesday night. I work 12 hour shifts on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm sorry, but there's football on. So I'm watching football. <laughs> so it isn't until like at least like Monday morning when I can record about last Wednesday's podcast. So. <laughs> it's all good, man. Okay. Well, that was, that was the end of the episode. Um, I, I am looking forward to the next episode, even though Wes, my favorite guy is gone. Um, that's fine. We got more, sh we got more people to look forward to and, uh, vote for and, uh, root for and stuff like that. So, uh, this was battle of the challenges podcast with Vincent cloud, like subscribe, comment and famous Dave. Yeah. Woo. I try not to pause there. I try to just jump right in. <laughs> oh, no. I noticed. I noticed. All right. I'm trying. Well, now, it's all... <laughs> well, now it's all about pressing the stop on the record button. If anyone right. were to know how to do that. <laughs>